Hey guys, welcome to Shaken Not Deterred, the podcast. I'm your host, Miriam Gilmore, and I am here today to talk to you about something that I have given a lot of advice on and talked to people about often, which is pausing and pausing when you are going through a change in your life. And I only recommend it and I only talk about it because I have been on the other side of that and I have made quick decisions and jumped into other situations um, because I didn't take the time to pause. And um, I think you can only learn that through experience and now I know better and I try and pause and I'll go more in depth about it. But that is what today's topic is. It's about sometimes pausing and taking a minute to rethink and reassess the situation so that you can make a better choice. So tune in. That's what it's all about. I've always been one who believes action creates momentum, for sure. However, there are times that I do think that we need to pause. I wish I would have known that, but sometimes life happens for you, not to you. Ain't that something? <laughs> but, you know, I, I guess, you know, it's in year, it's been years now. And when I look back at, you know, the way that things happened and the way that life transpired for me, um, you know, there's definitely takeaways. And I think now when I look back and I realize, wow, I didn't take the time. I didn't take the time that I needed to assess what was happening in my life um, so that I can make a better, you know, more calm decision as to what I wanted to do. I just kind of jumped and that's okay, I guess, you know, and, you know, to a certain extent, I'm kind of proud of myself because I did that um, because I wasn't afraid or I did it even though I was afraid. And yeah, I made a mistake. But like I think about it today and I could have saved so much money and <laughs> I could have really, you know, funded myself into like a little bit of a hiatus, if you want to call it, um, and really, really, really focus and think of what my next steps should have been. But I didn't have the wisdom and I didn't have the know-how to just say, okay, I'm going to just, you know, ride this out for a couple. And I didn't need to take like a year off. Um, so in 2000, I would say like 2008, uh, 2009, when the whole mortgage crisis was happening, that is when things got a little crazy for me. So I was in the middle of my business, which I had for, I don't know, almost 17 years. Uh, that business was pretty much becoming non-existent because the mortgage crisis was happening, right? So um, I had to quickly realize, okay, I need to do something different. And at that time, I went to work for my brother, who at that time had a very successful business, and I went to go work for him. And um, while I was working there, I was going through a lot of emotional things because at the same time, my marriage was falling apart. I was going through, uh, or I was beginning to go through what was going to be a, a divorce. And um, so as you can imagine, right, it was like the perfect storm. There was so much going on. I was working for my brother and, you know, while I was in there, I had always worked for myself. I started my business when I was 21 years old. So meanwhile, my brother gave me, gave me an amazing opportunity. I was feeling, I was feeling like, like a failure. Like I hadn't lived up to who I was or what I thought I was or all those crazy things that we think of. Right. And I was like, okay, well, I just need to go find another business. I just need to figure out what I'm going to do next, right? And, you know, at this time, guys, I had not graduated from college. I mean, I had, you know, an associate's degree, and um, but I didn't, you know, get my bachelor's or a master's or anything like that. So imagine, I'm almost 40 years old at this point, going through a divorce with two kids that now I have to solely maintain, and I have to figure out how I'm going to make, you know, upwards of $100,000 a year to be able to sustain the life that I you know, that I like to live the way that I like to live and that my children have become accustomed to too, right? So it was, you know, it was tough. And I decided at that time, well, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to buy a new business. I, start, I went online. I started to research businesses you can buy. I didn't even know, by the way, that there were any business brokers. I didn't even know that that was a thing. By the way, it's a thing. <laughs> it's a very lucrative thing because there's people who sell businesses all the time. Anyway, so I reached out to a broker who had a business that was being sold and I thought that, oh my God, this is an amazing business because let me just go back a little bit. So I, I love interior design. I loved designing my house and buying the furniture and doing drapery and I just love that. I love pillows and I love rugs and towels and all of that stuff. So 
when the opportunity presented itself, or actually it was an opportunity, the necessity came where I needed to reinvent myself. I was like, okay, well, what do I do? So when I went online and I started to look for businesses that I can kind of like get into, um, I was like, well, I don't know what I'm going to do. So, cause remember, I'm kind of like going completely away from what I knew, which was real estate and mortgage and title and all that, because that was imploding. So I'm like, okay, what am I going to do? So there was nothing, <laughs> I didn't, there was nothing that attracted me. There was nothing that I could think that I could like. I saw daycares. I'm like, could I really deal with a bunch of four-year-olds all day? Long? I don't know. I just looked at all of this. Um, but then there was this one thing that came up and it was a furniture consignment store, like an upscale furniture consignment store. And I was like, oh my God, I think I have visited this store before. So I said, I'll just check it out and see if this is something that maybe I can do. So I did and I checked it out and the numbers. And at that time, I guess my, I was skewed, right? Like I thought the numbers, I, I don't know. Anyways, I looked at the numbers and I was like, okay, I think that this could work and what I was going to invest into the business or buy the business for. And I remember I called one person who was like an accountant and I talked to them about the numbers and, you know, it was really like kind of like a very like, uh, how can I say this? I kind of just gave them a little information about the business, but how much information can somebody know over a phone call, right? So it was a phone call. I gave the, the accountant some information about the business, but he didn't see numbers. I just kind of told him what, you know, thinking back now, probably what I wanted him to hear. And he was like, yeah, I guess it could be okay. So I bought this business in the ta- in a downturn economy and it was really a bad decision. But, you know, I don't know. What, what do people say? Like God's timing is always right, I guess, <laughs> because I bought it. And, you know, I, lar- I learned a lot of things. I learned a lot about myself. I learned a lot about people uh, in this business. And the same thing I say about my marriage, there's people who've told me, oh, you stayed too long. And now when I talk about this business or maybe I shouldn't have bought it, But yeah, God's timing is always right. And maybe I stayed too long in my marriage because that's what was supposed to happen. And I bought this business that went downhill afterwards because that's what was supposed to happen, I guess, right? And I guess I got a lot of questions for God when I get there, (laughs) hopefully many, many years from now. But, But that's what happened. And those are the choices that I made. And we all have to kind of live with our choices. Anyways, after I, I did that, I, I decided while I was in the business, I'm like, well, this is not going to be enough money to sustain me and my kids. Like, it's just not going to happen. Like, this was a, this was a business for somebody who was like a stay at home mom and had a husband that was making boo boo bucks and that can maintain her. And this was just supplemental money. This is not money to like maintain me or maintain a family. So I was like, okay, well, I got to get out of this. (laughs) And I put in a lot of money that I had saved into this. So while I was in the business is when I got licensed for my mortgage license and I decided to get back into, you know, into real estate and mortgage. But here's the thing, and this is where the whole pause thing comes in. I was like, man, you know, after the fact, had I just taken the money that I invested to buy this business, okay, if I would have just taken that money and said, okay, listen, Miriam, take a break. You've worked every damn fucking day since you were 18 years old. You've never taken a break. You didn't take maternity leave. You didn't do any of that. Here's, um, t- take six months, six months. I didn't need more than that. And just figure out what the hell you want to do. Get a clear mind. I never had that opportunity and I had the ability to do it, but I didn't have the foresight to say, I'm going to do this, you know? So looking back, I'm like, man, I wish I would have thought about that because I could have really used that time to rethink what I wanted in my life. And I may, I might have just been exactly where I am today, but it would have given me this tranquility and this clear perspective, I think, um, that I needed at that time because there was so much turmoil. Imagine I was going through a divorce. My business of 16 years was imploding. Um, it financial disaster mess all over the place. My friends, family, people were losing properties left and right. There was a lot going on and it was really, really difficult. So I think probably that would have been like just what the doctor ordered for me to have some time off, but I didn't even, I couldn't see it. It was, I could have chosen that and I, I didn't. Um, and again, I'm a doer. I am a person that, you know, like I figure it out and, you know, I take the risk. I took the risk. 
Um, and I want to say that again, I didn't take it without fear. I took it despite fear. Um, and I did it anyways, you know, looking back, was it the best decision I made? I probably, I think probably not, but it brings me to where I am today. And now today I can share this with you and let you know that if you are ever in this situation, man, take a minute, pause, relax before you jump into the next thing. Because sometimes you need that time of clarity and that time to really see things through and figure things out. I wish I would have had that. I wish I would have given that to myself because I had the ability to do it. And a lot of times we do have the ability, but, you know, we just don't want to take the time to pause. We feel action is more important than just staying calm because we're, at least me, I'm accustomed to believing that people who are just like sitting around are just like letting time pass and they're kind of like slackers and that's just not me. So it's just, I guess I, 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 I guess I, I didn't have enough confidence. Or I, I can't even say I didn't have enough confidence. I didn't know better. <laughs> I didn't even think that I could do that. Uh, and I wish I would have, I really do. Uh, but this is what it is. And, and, and we take what we get. We don't, what's that saying that could say you get what you get and you don't get upset. Right. So I'm not upset about it, but I just wish I would have done it differently. So I wanted to make sure that I made this podcast and that I talked about it because if anybody's going through this and you can snag six months and not work and not have, you know, and say, okay, I'm going to say whatever my monthly nut is, if it's 6,000, if it's 10,000, whatever that is, if you have six months of that and you can say, or even three months, whatever it is. And you can say, I'm going to take three months or six months or a year, whatever your number is. And I'm going to like figure it out and kind of like just get a clear mind and get a clear head. I would say do it. I mean, I I wish I had because I think it would have given me the clarity and the calm and that tranquility to make the next step. Had it been different than what I'm doing right now? Maybe not. I feel that I would be doing maybe the same thing, but it would be in a different way, more calm, less like worry less stress. There was so much stress at that time. Um, and that's something that I don't wish on anyone that stress and that worry. Oh God, that worry. That is, that is just terrible when you have that worry. I really hope that, uh, this, uh, episode you have a takeaway and that if you have the ability to make a different choice to choose to take some time for yourself, do it because time is the one thing you can never get back. You can get back the money, but the time you don't get back. So hopefully I have sparked an idea, a thought, because I wish I would have had a spark or a thought or somebody or a good friend to be like, Hey Miriam, why don't you just like take a couple months off and see what happens? No one said that to me. Like no one. If somebody would have said that, maybe I would have taken some time. So I am going to be that voice, that friend, that spark of an idea that comes and tells you, Hey, If you're going through something, maybe take some time. If you have the ability to live off of, you know, whatever your monthly nut is, like I said, and you can do it for two, three, whatever amount of time that that is, however many months, take the time because the time is irreplaceable. That's it. That's a wrap. I hope that this was helpful for you. I hope that you found value in it. And if you did, I hope you'll share it with your friends. Thank you once again for being here on Shaken, Not Deterred, the podcast. I'm your host, Miriam Gilmore, and I hope to see you real soon.